Hi there. Today we're going to talk about calculating a derivative using the definition of a derivative. So in my last video I talked about where we get this definition of a derivative from. And that's this formula here. f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. But there's also this formula. f prime x is equal to the limit as x approaches a f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And we'll talk about that in the other example video. But in this example video, we're going to do some examples using the definition that I talked about previously. All right, so for our first example, we take a function, f of x is equal to 4x plus 3. And we want to take the derivative of this. So we say f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x. All of this over h. So here all we're going to do is we're going to sub in things into this formula. So you write out the limit again, that always stays. And then, so f of x plus h, we just sub in x plus h wherever x is. And then f of x, all we do is just write out f of x again. And once again we put this all over h. So now the next line, we have to write out this limit again until we evaluate it. So now let's expand these brackets. So you get 4x plus 4h plus 3 minus 4x minus 3 over h. And as you can see here, some of these terms will cancel. So the 4x's and the 3's both cancel. And so now we're left with the limit as h approaches 0, 4h over h. So these h's cancel and all we're left with is 4. So now we can conclude that the derivative of 4x plus 3 is simply 4. Okay, so here's another example. This one's a bit trickier. So our function f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 4. So now to find the derivative, we're going to write out f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 and f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So you'll probably get to know this formula pretty well. So we write out uh, the limit in front again. And so now we're going to sub in x plus h wherever there's an x in f of x. So x plus h squared minus 3 times x plus h plus 4. Now we're going to minus the whole f of x. And once again, all of this is over h. So now, keeping the limit again, this is important until we evaluate it. And so now let's just expand all these brackets. So x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus 3x minus 3h plus 4 minus x squared plus 3x minus 4. And all of this over h. So once again, let's look for uh, terms that cancel out, so the x squared, so those cancel out, the three x's, and also the fours. And it looks like about it right now. And this is where we have to do some thinking. So we have to figure out how we're going to get this h to cancel. So the most logical thing would be to factor an h on the top, and then we're left with just an h on the bottom as well. So now we can divide the top and the bottom both by h, so on the top, we get 2x minus 3, and on the bottom, we just simply get 1. Alright, so this is the last example that I'm going to be showing you guys today. So f of x is equal to 3x over x plus 1. This means that f prime of x is going to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0. And now I'm going to stop writing out this formula because I think you guys should know it by now. And so we're going to sub in 8 x plus h wherever there's an x, so 3x plus h over x plus h plus 1 minus f of x, which is 3x over x plus 1. Now all of this is going to be over h. So now in the next line, once again, we're writing out the limit as h approaches 0. And we're going to try and find a common denominator for these two terms. So the easiest way to do this is we're going to multiply the denominator of the second term by the numerator of the first, and the same thing for the uh, the denominator of the first and the numerator of the second. 
and then we're going to multiply both the denominators together. So now we're left with one big fraction and all of this over h. So now we're going to try and simplify this big mess that we've created. Once again, it's the limit as h approaches 0. And so let's expand the terms inside the brackets. And so now as I'm writing these out, I see that there's a pattern between the positive terms and the negative terms, which will definitely be helpful. But first I'm going to write out the denominator, which is x plus h plus 1 multiplied by x plus 1, and all of this over h. Now as we can see, we have terms that are x squared, hx, and x in both the negative and positive terms. So we know these terms are going to cancel out. So we can just ignore them now. So now we're left with 3h over x plus h plus 1 multiplied by x plus 1. And now we're going to multiply this by 1 over h opposed to dividing by h, which is the same thing. It just makes it easier to see that the h on the top and 3h is going to cancel with the h in 1 over h. So now we're going to take the limit as h approaches 0, subbing in 0 wherever there's an h, and we're left with 3 over x plus 1 squared. So I hope that this video helped you to understand how to find the derivative of a function using the definition of a derivative. If you're still confused, you might want to check out my previous video explaining what this formula really means. I also made a video with examples using the alternate definition of a derivative that you saw at the start of this video. If you still have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll try my best to help you out.